Here at Aquarium Co-op, we have a wide variety of tanks to love. The most popular ones are Murphy's, uh, Robert's tank, the 90 gallon, but the most new popular one is this one right here. And today we have Caitlin to talk about what's inside of it, or actually the one most important thing inside of it, and I guess I'll talk about the rest of it. So I'm really excited to tell you about this alien beta that we have in. So I was really excited when Robert told me he was ordering him. I was even uh, more excited when I saw that he put him in this little three gallon display, which means I get to see him pretty much every day. He is such a cool looking fish. So it's called an alien beta because they have a full mass. So he's going to have the scales on the top of his head there all the way to his nose. It's also going to be on his cheek. So he's really, really pretty. A lot of bettas, when you buy them, you get a lot of like color changing. They have a marble gene in them. So you could buy, like, say, a koi betta. It's got all these different patterns on them. But you take them home, and a couple months later, he's going to completely change. This guy, I don't think we'll get too much marbling going on. Um, he's actually mostly a wild betta. So a lot of this blue and the shimmering reflective here is going to come from the Mahai Chinensis bettas. Those guys come from the Mahai Chai region. The Maha Chai region in Thailand. It's kind of a southern area and they live in brackish waters. So this is a, a very unique type of betta. Most bettas they want like that tannic, soft, acidic water. This guy, he wants brackish water. When we got them in the store the first time they didn't look so good because we were keeping them in a high enough pH. So we had, actually had to move them with our platies and we had to put them in that tank with all that coral in there. They looked much better. And so we kind of have a little bit of coral in there with this guy just to kind of raise the hardness um, so the Maha Chinensis beta is where he's going to get that blue from and that extremely reflective color on the scales. And then you'll also notice he's got a little bit of red in his tail. I don't know if I can get him to turn, but that red is going to come from beta and bilis. And then for kind of the rest of the look, they just bred him with beta splendus. So this is like an incredibly awesome looking type of mutt beta. Um, if my research is correct, there was one person who started producing him. And it was kind of like a little secret as to how he was making them. And now more and more breeders are starting to kind of pick it up. Another reason they were called the alien betta is because they kind of have a weird shaped head. They're a very small betta in general. But that was the first couple, um, I guess, renditions of when they were breeding them. And since then, the breeders have done a much better job about getting that head to look kind of more like a regular betta. So there's nothing like weird or like pinched shape kind of looking on them. So far, this guy has been super chill in the shop. We have him in there with a bunch of these red cherry shrimp. I think this one's actually buried right here, so hopefully we'll have like some awesome red cherry shrimp babies coming up in there. But he's doing awesome with the Brigate Resboras, the CBDs. He's not chasing them at all. Um, and he has a pretty good appetite too. Definitely, if you pick up one of these guys, uh, lots of blood worms. He's definitely loving the vibrobites. So when we first put him in there, he had horizontal stripes going. I think he's yes. doing some of them right now. Yes. So why do they do that? Um, that's one of the ways that you can sex them. So like if you see a betta in the shop and it's definitely, it's got like two bold uh, kind of horizontal lines, that could be a female betta. Or kind of like this guy, it could just be a male that's a little stressed out. I was in there pretty earlier um, and I scrubbed like the entire tank. I did some work on the dwarf hair grass because it's getting a little explosive. Yeah. And so he's definitely going to be a little stressed out from those colors. I've also kind of noticed in general that this betta in particular seems to show him a lot more than say like the male betta splendus. Those guys really don't ever show him unless they're stressed. But I've walked by him multiple times when there's really no one in the shop. It's pretty quiet and he'll show him. And so I think it's just maybe he's been bred a lot. Like I said, there's betta maha chanensis, there's imbilis, there's splendus. All those bettas you sex them with the lines. So I just think that's something that uh, came through in those genes that he shows them a little bit. Okay, so I don't know that much about bettas, and I was making him flare earlier. And yes. I heard flaring is a good oh, yeah. exercise. Yeah. Um, how long should you have a betta flare for, mm -hmm. and like you know how often per week or something? I have some bettas that I've never flared them with. I kind of look at the activity of the betta. Um, so for example, I have had a betta get really depressed on me. He was in a 10 gallon tank and I had him in there for two years and I never really did anything with the aquascape. I never really added any new fish. And I noticed that towards the end of those two years, he was getting very lethargic um, and he didn't seem as interested. So that's a betta where I definitely go in there 
and I exercise him. I keep his life interesting, I engage with him, I play with him. And one of the things you can do is make him flare. I use a little makeup compact because it has a little mirror in there. I hold it up to him right in front like that so he can see it. And I do that for about 10 minutes a day. I do that maybe once or twice a week. Like I said, there's some bettas where they're really active and they're already kind of engaging with the fish more. And if you see your fish like kind of just every now and then flaring at other fish, he's going to get that exercise naturally. And you okay. don't need to do it too much with him. Okay, now, this is not about the betta, but this has become one of the most popular tanks at the store. Definitely. Why, why is that? <laughs> um, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I, I have one of these little three gallons at home. Um, I, was, I was a little surprised to hear that it is a three gallon. Um, yeah, it, it says it, five on it, but it's a five-way divider. Yes, kind of so it says it's a five, but it has the dividers in it, so you can split it five ways. But I did the measurements on the tank, I did the math, and it is a little bit bigger than a three-gallon. So this is 18 inches right here. I believe height-wise we're looking at seven, and then depth was around six. I think it's super popular because you can put this tank anywhere. I have one, I have like a little kind of like extender, uh, bar on my kitchen and it fits perfectly right there with this uh, little micro USB air pump the tanks pretty much completely silent yeah. so I have a bunch of roommates and they complained a ton about the pump I had previously now the things just running silent in my kitchen so this is a tank that anybody can get you can put it anywhere um, it's really attractive first thing in a house. That's what I use mine for. It catches yeah, people's or an eye. Office, maybe? Or an office, yeah. Yeah, yeah so if you have an office, this is the tank for you. It's got a low profile. Let's talk about the things that are in there. Uh, we have the, the small sponge filter that we mm -hmm. sell. That's about $4.99, right? Yep. Something like that. Uh, right around the, there. What's the light up there? This is going to be the 16 inch Stingray light. Is it and this one? It is going to be right this one. <laughs> right here. It's right behind Jimmy. Perfect. Yeah. Um, I have a bit of a bigger light on it because it is 18 inches. Um, this guy here will do it for you, the little Fenex clip-on light. Um, it's just going to mount, it's going to basically going to sit right on the edge for you there and you can have it going this way and that would be perfect. I like these, it's going to give you a little bit more coverage. This tank does come with a lid, right? It comes with the lid, so you're going to have, let's see if I can pop this guy off here. You're going to have the full lid on top, so you're not going to have any gaps or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, except one problem kind of with it. Yeah. Right? You know. What what I do at home, I can kind of move it up here so you guys can see it. Hopefully I don't like destroy the tank. But I have just a little lip up like this for the airline tubing. Another thing you can do, I actually saw this at the AGA convention. I thought it was a super cool trick, is those dividers that come with the tank, I saw that they uh, were using two dividers as lids and they actually fit perfectly oh, right on yeah. top. That's and you have a little gap in the middle about that big so you could use that for your airline tubings and stuff this guy if you get him in a store probably on the cheap end you're looking at around 50 bucks to a hundred and something yeah <laughs> yeah that's like the cheap end i found them online for about 70 to 80 dollars but like you get a really really nice well bred out alien style betta like jimmy said it's going to be over a couple uh about 100 plus for you. There was an awesome copper yeah. one. He Maybe had some like green in there. Yeah. He looked really neat. Yeah. yeah. And um, you said you wouldn't really suggest the blue ball substrate um, because yeah. it kind of breaks down pretty easily. What would you put in there if you had? So to I, it? I do like the fluval stratum. I just don't like it 100. percent This stuff, it's a very floaty stratum. You could probably see it like the parva. It's, it's so small, it kind of has a hard time staying in there because the little, the way it's shaped, it, it's very big. And personally, I don't like having to mess with my plants all the time. Um, like Jimmy said, it does break down. So you will end up with kind of like a compacted dirt layer down a muddy layer, yeah. here, a muddy layer. And when you gravel back it, it's gonna go everywhere. Um, what I like to do is I like to take something like this, a very nutrient rich substrate. I like to mix it with either like Seachem Fluorite or Eco Complete. We have a new substrate I'm super excited yeah, to try out. It looks cool. awesome. The, the Active grab Flora. Grab it! We don't sell this online, so... Yeah, Active Flora. So this is something that I'm excited to try. Um, something like this. Is. It does. It says it has some bacteria yeah, on it. It but says I would it's going to be. still cycle the tank. Yeah, obviously, still add your bacteria. Um, I cycle my tanks at home with a huge sponge, used sponge. That's kind of something I. This is why I like sponge filters. Is I can just take this guy, plop him into the next tank, and that tank is pretty much cycled for you. So how often do you guys change the water? This. 
I I actually don't remember. Yeah, Robert does it right. Robert. Uh, Robert. Wide a ton of fish in there. There is a ton of fish in there, but yeah, the nitrate but the levels. Load is very small. Yeah, it's been really reasonable. The every time I've seen the water tested in this tank, and I mean every single time, the water's been perfect. Okay. Um, now shrimp, they don't have that high of a bio load. Brigate reservoirs Definitely especially not. don't have that much of a bio load. It's really just the... Uh, yeah, it's just the beta and then, you know, a couple CBDs. Those guys do add up. And maybe so, the ornate goby in there. There is that ornate goby. That guy's really cool. That's actually one of the fish I have at home in my three gallon. Um, just a little... That guy's always surprising me with what he's doing. Sometimes he's on the glass. He'd be on the, uh, the wood, the rocks. And he eats uh, biofilm. He's been going after some algae in my tanks. Um, but he has quite the appetite for the fluval bug bites, I've noticed. He definitely uses his little mouth, bends his head, and just scoops yeah. him right up. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, I guess that pretty much covers that whole tank. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Caitlin, of for course. taking your time on your lunch break to talk to us. I love it. All right, thanks.